Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today I'm going to talk to you about URL redirects. What they are, why they're so important, when you should use them, and of course how to add them in Squarespace. As your business evolves, you'll likely need to update your website to reflect those changes. Every time you change a URL slug on your website, you run the risk of breaking old links. You've probably experienced this as a consumer, so you go onto someone's site or you're looking for a product or information and you end up on a 404 or page not found error page. And this is the result of a broken link. The good news is it's really easy to fix the broken links with URL redirects. So what is a URL redirect? So basically it's a way of forwarding or redirecting website visitors away from a page that doesn't exist to an active page. You'd set one of these up if you change an existing page URL or if you delete a page. Because if you change a URL or delete a page on your website, the existing page URL will go to a page not found or a 404 error page and you really don't want this to happen. By setting up the URL redirect, you're saying to your site, okay, I want this old URL to redirect to this new URL so that when someone enters the old URL or clicks on a button, somewhere around the web that contains that old link, they'll actually be redirected and end up on the new page. So because we don't want the visitors to land on a non-existent page and get an error, it's very important to set these up if you need them. Luckily, Squarespace actually makes this really easy, so let's just jump right into it. Okay, so let's just jump right in and I'll show you how to create a URL redirect in Squarespace. So this works exactly the same in 7.0 and 7.1. I'm in 7.1 right now, but like I said, it works exactly the same in both versions. So let's just firstly touch on what the URL is and where to find that for a page. So if you go into your pages panel, here are all your pages and I'm going to have a look here on this blog. Let's see what this URL is. If you click on the little page settings icon, open up the page settings and under general, you're going to see URL slug. So this is essentially what you'd type into the browser if you wanted to get to this page. So let's say my URL is bigcatcreative.com and my slug is slash news. So if I typed into the browser bigcatcreative.com slash news, then you'd end up on this page. That's not actually true. Don't try to type that in because you're not going to find anything. But just for an example, that is what your slug is. So it's the second part of your URL and it comes after your domain name. Now you shouldn't have to use URL redirects often, but like I said in the beginning, if you change your URL for any reason, or if you delete a page or if you want to move a page, they can be really handy. So for example, let's just say, okay, this is my blog page. Right now the page title is news. Maybe I decided six months into my business that for some reason, don't ask me why, I wanted to change the title to blog. I don't want it to be news, I want it to be blog. So I'm changing the page title, which is fine. You can change the page title, no worries. But as soon as you change the URL slug, that's when you're gonna to need to set up a redirect. So I'm gonna change this to blog. Now, as soon as I click save here, this page URL slug is gonna be set to blog. And the issue is that people may still be visiting the news page with the URL slug news. And it's because I've changed this slug, if someone does go to visit that news page, they're going to end up on a page that says page not found because that page isn't actually going to exist anymore. Generally, if people are just clicking through on your site, it doesn't matter because they're going to be taken to the correct page with the new slug. But the issue is when you have things linked from external sources. So, for example, Google might have your news page indexed on Google and it takes a while for these things to update. You could have that news page on Google for months before Google realizes that you've changed it. Or if you use something like Pinterest or even any social media where you've shared a link in the past and people can still access that link. If they click on that news link, they're going to end up on a not found. So we need to just make sure that any old links we redirect those to the new page so people can still click on an old link and it will just redirect them to where they're supposed to be. So I'm going to click save here and let's go and set up a URL redirect. So let's go back to our settings, scroll down and click on advanced. I don't really know why this is in advanced because honestly, I think this should be standard practice for anyone who has a website and it should be very common knowledge and it's not really advanced. So don't be scared of that. Click on URL mappings. 
Meppings is just another word for redirects. I'm pretty sure these used to be called URL redirects, but whatever. It's the same thing. It's redirecting or it's mapping to a new page. I love that Squarespace actually has this little example right here in this page so we don't have to go and search for a guide every time we want to come in here and add a redirect. I have about 100 redirects on my site because it's such an old site and I've changed things so many times and I still forget how to do this. So I love that they have this little template here that we can use. Now, before I jump into showing you how to do this, there are two different types of redirects. One is a 301 redirect and a 302 redirect. So that really doesn't mean anything, but essentially a 301 redirect is a permanent redirect and a 302 redirect is a temporary redirect. If you wanna learn more, you can click on the what is the difference button, which actually takes you to the whole article about the difference and what you should be using them for. But essentially, if you've made a permanent change like we just did, you're gonna to wanna to use a 301. I believe the only main difference is that it's basically telling your website and Google, like this is a permanent change, so update it. If you use a 302, you're essentially telling Google, this is just a temporary change. So leave the links that you have as they are because we're gonna remove this eventually. So I've actually never used a 302 redirect, but I use a lot of 301s. So I'd say the majority of the time you're gonna be using the 301s, the permanent redirects. And that's what we're gonna do today. And the only difference between setting them up is just writing the numbers 301 or 302. So if you do wanna do a temporary one, this method is still exactly the same. You just need to change the number. So they have this example here, which is really great. I'm actually just gonna copy it. So I'm gonna copy this whole line. And I actually like always copying them because it just ensures that the formatting is all correct. And I'm gonna paste it up here. So remember what we did, we had a blog page that had the URL slug of slash news. And now we've changed that slug to slash blog. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to backspace everything before the slash and I'm going to type in news and I'm going to type in blog. So it's pretty straightforward. This is the original slug and this is the new slug. In between you have one space, a little arrow, another space, and then after the second slug you have one space and then you either have 301 or 302. I'm going to use 301 this time. And that's essentially it. So this is a nice easy one to look at because the slugs are so small. But if you do have a blog post or something with a long URL that you want to change, it might look something like blog. Um, this is the name of the original post. <laughs> like they can get quite long and we actually want to redirect it to blog. This is the name of the new post. So that's just an example of um, redirecting a blog post to a new blog post slug and they can get quite long obviously. So you just need to keep an eye on make sure that formatting that you're putting in is correct because as soon as it goes onto two lines, it can get a little tricky. So that's why I always just like to copy the ones that I know work. So let's just delete this one and we can just test this out. So if it's not working, it's not gonna work and we just have to make sure the formatting is right. Otherwise it should work fine. So click save. Now I'm going to use the URL of my site and I'm going to type in news. And if you just keep an eye on that URL, it should redirect to the blog page. So did you see how it changed from news to blog? So we know that is working perfectly. And that's it. That's how you add a URL redirect. It's actually so quick and easy and it can save a ton of people landing on 404s or page not founds, which you really don't want. It's also going to help search engines because they're going to see, oh, okay, that's the old URL. This is the new URL. This is what we're going to change it to. It's going to help them index those pages faster and easier. Now, speaking of page not found, make sure to actually adjust your 404 page not found and customize it just in case someone does land on one of those pages one day because it probably will happen. The longer you have your website, you'll probably make a mistake along the way and someone's gonna land somewhere on a page not found. So just make sure that page looks good and you've got some good text on it. If you're not sure how to do that or really what I'm talking about, I've linked below in the description a blog post all about how to customize your 404 page not found page within Squarespace 
to make it look really good and to keep people from leaving when they land on one of those pages. And Squarespace makes this really, really easy. So it's definitely worth doing. It'll probably only take you 30 minutes. Otherwise, that's it. So I hope you learned something new and helpful today. And this is going to help you manage your website better and keep more people on your site. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.